Okay, so if we need to find a third degree polynomial equation that has roots of negative 4 and 2 minus 3i, well, it's a third degree polynomial, but they only told us two of the roots. Well, we know the third root because of what I just told you, that complex and radical roots always come in conjugate pairs. So if negative 4 and 2 minus 3i are roots, then we also know 2 plus 3i is a root. Now, we're going to use the same kind of methods that we used yesterday, but when we do this, now we have these imaginary numbers in there, so we've got to be careful, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, let's set it up here. We know that a root of negative 4 is going to be x plus 4. That part's easy. All right. Now, for this imaginary root, okay, uh, we said that you change the signs when you put it into the uh, linear factor form. So change the signs of 2 minus 3i, so that's negative 2 plus 3i, and change the signs of the other one, negative 2 minus 3i. Okay, um, all right, now, this probably looks really, really weird uh, when we're getting ready to try and distribute this. Um, I'm debating something right here. Yeah, let's go with it. Okay, uh, so I'm going to foil, well, not really foil, okay, because we're multiplying three terms by three terms here. Uh, so, let's just start. Let's do this very methodically, okay? Distribute the x to everything in that second set of parentheses. So, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. x times negative 3i is negative 3ix. Now, distribute the negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And negative 2 times negative 3i is plus 6i. And then finally, we're going to distribute the 3i. I'm switching colors here so you can see what I'm doing. So 3i times x is 3ix, 3i times negative 2, negative 6i. Positive 3 times negative 3 <coughs> is negative 9. i times i is i squared, and i squared is equal to negative 1. That's something you need to know. Okay. So the i times i is i squared, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to write it like that until I can simplify it. Okay, now there's a lot of stuff in that parentheses, but the good news is if you look at it, a lot of it's going to simplify. Okay, um, x squared, it's by itself. Um, we have negative 2x and negative 2x, so that's negative 4x. We have negative 3ix and positive 3ix, so those go away. Um, we have positive 6i and minus 6i, those cancel out. And then finally we have plus 4 and negative 9 times negative 1, so that's positive 9, so 4 plus 9 is 13. So all of a sudden our imaginary numbers are gone. That's nice. Okay. And then final step, all we need to do is uh, distribute the binomial to the trinomial. So we've got x cubed minus 4x squared plus 13x plus 4x squared minus 16x plus 52. So final answer is x cubed 
the 4x squares cancel, minus 3x plus 52. And here's what you can do to kind of check your work, okay? Uh, remember, if these are roots, that means they are x-intercepts. If you are an x-intercept, that means that the function equals what at that point? If you're an x-intercept, the function equals what at that point on the x-axis? Zero. Zero. Okay, so that means that if we plug these roots into this final polynomial here, then we should get zero. If we constructed the correct polynomial, then we should get zero. Negative four gives us zero, so that's a good sign. I do want to check one of the imaginary ones just in case. Now, there is an I button on your calculator, okay? It is seconds, and your decimal button will allow you to put that i in there. So just make sure you put 2 minus 3i in parentheses, cubed, minus 3 times put 2 minus 3i in parentheses, <clears throat> excuse me, plus 52, and it gives us 0. Now, if that one works, it's almost guaranteed that the other one's going to work. You could just go back in and uh, change that to plus 3i <clears throat> um, to confirm that all three of those roots give you that polynomial. Okay, so kind of a lengthy process, but y'all can do this. Okay, uh, let's look at one that has a square root in it. Okay, let's look at one that has a radical. So 2 minus the square root of 3 and negative 1 are the two given roots. Okay, radicals also come in pairs, so that means 2 plus the square root of 3 is our third root. <clears throat> so, let's write our equation. Uh, I always put the rational numbers first. By rational, that means um, either whole numbers or fractions. Uh, those always come first. <coughs> because there are some nice things that happen uh, with the other ones. Some things cancel out. So again, change the signs when you put them in to linear factor form. So that means we're going to have x minus 2 plus the square root of 3 and x minus 2 minus the square root of 3. Okay. So let's see what happens when we distribute all these terms. Okay, start by distributing the x. x squared minus 2x minus the square root of 3x. The x is not under the square root, by the way. I've said it like it was, but it's not. Uh, distributing the negative 2. Negative 2x plus 4, negative 2, and negative square root of 3. Negative times a negative is a positive. You do not change what's under the square root. The 2 is in front of the square root, the 3 stays under the square root. And then finally distributing the positive square root of 3. So we've got positive square root of 3 of x minus 2 square roots of 3. Positive times a negative is a negative. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. Okay. When you multiply square roots, you multiply what's under the square root, so 3 times 3 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. That's why it works out that way. All right. So similar thing happens here. Some stuff is going to cancel out. Uh, let's see here. We've got negative 2x and negative 2x, so that's minus 4x. We've got a negative square root of 3x and a positive square root of 3 of x. We have a positive 2 square root of 3 and negative 2 square root of 3. And we have 4 minus 3, so that's 1. So with the imaginary numbers and with the radicals, they end up canceling out. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you can just leave them out of the problem um, because you may not do something else correctly, so don't just drop them. Um, but they do end up canceling out with these. 
Okay, so then we just need to distribute the binomial to the trinomial. And combine like terms. So our final polynomial is x cubed minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. And once again, you could plug in your um, roots to check. It's a really, really easy way to catch mistakes, guys. It doesn't tell you what the mistake is, but it does let you know if there is one. Now be careful. When you check negative numbers, when you're raising negative numbers to powers, you need to make sure that you put them in parentheses. Okay? If not, it will not calculate correctly, and you will think that you have a mistake when you don't. Okay? Um, <clears throat> again, usually if one of them works, then the other ones do as well, but it can't hurt to check it. Um, I'm talking and trying to do this at the same time is not the best idea. Okay, so um, negative 1 works, 2 minus the square root of 3 works, 2 plus the square root of 3 was going to work as well. Okay, uh, let's do one more like this. So one more like this. If uh, 3 and negative 4i are our roots, now the imaginary root looks, it's in slightly different form than the other ones have been, okay, but it's okay. Uh, if it's negative 4i, then its conjugate root is positive 4i, okay. Uh, there's just not a real part to that complex number, okay. Complex numbers, I know I'm just kind of throwing them out there for you, but complex numbers have the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, so it's just missing that real part. You could write negative 4i as 0 minus 4i, okay, um, but we just don't write the 0. All right, so that should make life a little bit easier, though, when we're having to construct this polynomial, right, because then we don't have quite as much uh, involved in the factors because we just have to worry about x plus 4i and x minus 4i. So let's see here. Now we're just multiplying a binomial times binomial. That's a lot easier, right? x squared minus 4ix plus 4ix. Uh, positive 4 times negative 4 is negative 16i times i is i squared, which is negative 1. So let's see what we've got here. The 4ix's cancel. Negative 16 times negative 1 is plus 16. Now let me point something out before we finish this one off. Uh, x squared plus 16 uh, looks very similar to something that we can factor. If that were a minus instead of a plus, we could factor that. With x minus 4 and x plus 4. The difference of perfect squares. Well, this is the sum of perfect squares, and we've been very adamant that we cannot factor that. But with knowing imaginary numbers, we can now factor it. Okay, x squared plus 16 is x plus 4i and x minus 4i. So I'm just kind of throwing that out because I've got um, an assignment on 10 marks for you guys to do tomorrow, and I think this is uh, there are a couple of problems that are uh, kind of like that. So throwing that out there to uh, prep you. Okay, um, final step, we need to multiply these two binomials. We get x cubed plus 16x minus 3x squared minus 48. I don't like it when it's not in standard form, so I'm going to move that negative 3x squared to be the second term instead of the third term. 